Morning YouTube, Rob Bruno here. Today I'm going to do a DVD app versus a comic review. And I am going to be doing that on The Dark Knight Returns and the versus the comic. I was a bit disappointed with the cartoon. The book, on the other hand, is a fantastic piece of work by Frank Miller. Bear in mind, this book came out, I can't remember when this came out. Um, when I put it this way, I was still quite young, so I must have been about seven, maybe eight years old, perhaps, when it originally first came out. So it's a good 20-something, you know, nearly 25 years ago. <clears throat> and then they, people have been asking, you know, when is there going to be a cartoon? Come on, come on. So they made it. Don't get me wrong, the animation in it is really, really good. I really like it, as I can kind of show you. I don't want a stupid camera. Hang on. And there's some technical details here. No, it's not going to work. Right. So the cartoon, <coughs> the actual visual effects in it are incredible, but it is let down by one person. And that man is Peter Weller, who, for people of my generation, will know was Robocop. Um, I have personally felt that they have done a bad choice in picking Weller as the voice of Batman in this, because he just does not have that anger. They did one once called, um, I Know the Bat. I found this by accident once on YouTube. And... Um, it's Carrie Kelly, who, if you've read it, is the new Robin, telling these two or three kids her perspective of who Batman is. And that one's really good, you know, when he has the fight against the mutant leader at the end of the first disc. He actually sounds like he's supposed to, but in this one, it's kind of like... Eh. And then I managed to get hold of a... Um, and in a copy of one of my friends <clears throat> of the second part now there is one specific piece that everyone will know about which I will try to find in here if I can where right so um, bear with a sec there's a scene where Batman tries to rally the mutants and it's what he says that really should have got everyone's attention and it was quite poor how they did that i'm having a bit of trouble trying to find it because i'm trying to talk to you and do this at the same time <coughs> um so it's about um no it's big for the back i'll be with you in a minute uh, da, 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 da. Then, there's the joker uh, come on, where is it? That's the beginning. Right, I'm going to talk to you whilst I try and find this. Um, it happens to be the scene where Batman um, rallies the mutants together to basically um, get them to work for him. But it's when he's on... Oh, hang on, I think there is. He's on a horse and he's basically in the middle of this... Well site I guess you could just call it and um, oh god where is it right here it is right he ends up on a horse in the middle of this pier and all these all these people around here are the mutants who are basically following the Batman and he says um, he grabs a a rifle and snaps it in half because he's Batman and he says yeah this little clumsy stupid thing this is the weapon of the enemy we do not need it we will not use it our weapons are quiet precise in time I will teach you to them tonight you will rely on your fists and your brains tonight we are the law tonight I am the law that's right now if he hits Batman he will want to be like I am the law that's right yeah with you know with a kind of sense in his voice of you do not muck around with this man he is extremely tough but when peter weller does it, it's kind of tonight i am the law okay 
let's go. It's kind of feeble and useless on this one. And a lot of people I've heard who have watched it have all turned around and gone, really? Really, Peter? You did that? And then there's another scene which, at the very end, where he says, which I can find from doing this one, the very last words of Batman in this episode are good enough. But it's everything that leads up to that point. And they've cut that and well it just sentences good enough. And it's kind of like I just can't be bothered, just you know, because just pay me. And that was a massive letdown. He was okay, he was brilliant in Robocop, as Robocop I should say. But he wasn't too bad in Star Trek in Starkness as as um Admiral Marcus. But in this it was a deep letdown. So if I'm going to go against this come on. The cartoon versus the book. The book is going to win every time. Until The Dark Knight Strikes Back came back. Um, this is personally... I, only, I asked for these for Christmas because of the, comic, the um, cartoon coming out. And I've read them many times. The Dark Knight Returns is still my favourite out, out of the two of them. Because it's just gritty and down... You know, iconic really and you know he's a masterpiece and then Frank Miller decided to do the next half and the story revolves around Batman making a revolution effectively against President Luther as you can tell the artwork in this is actually completely different to the artwork that we had from the Dark Knight Returns you know it's a bit more um, kind of, I can't be bothered, you know, I'm d d d just doing this. And then the fact in this one is that Batman uses weapons to actually nearly kill people. You know, on his cape he's got loads of razor blades that he slices into Luther's face and he marks the, um, the Zorro mask. Um, and then in the end he recruits a couple of superheroes, so he has Plastic Man. Uh, Superman in the end comes along and he gets given the planet for his for the first church of Superman. Uh, there's Superman's daughter, Lara, who is the daughter of Superman and Wonder Woman, who is... It's not the greatest picture I'm about to find you, but... Oh, geez, um, she's actually quite irritating, to be fair. It's actually her. She's the daughter of Superman. As per usual, I won't tell you the full story because it'll be a bit pointless, but I will give you the links for it if for Wikipedia if you want to read up on it. So my next one is going to be Harry Potter 4, so I'll be back in a bit. Rock on.